I'm, I'm Ed Shires and, and I, I work on Narrowboats and I just want to kind of walk through, talk through a job I've just done for someone and it's a, a solar power installation. Um, so obviously I, I'm just promoting my work I am. This is, this video is kind of to promote what I do. Um, so it's, um, it uses two large solar panels, I fitted two large uh, you know, like a domestic style solar panels and they are 305 watt each um, and I've mounted them using my, my bracket set um, so it's, it's impossible to buy brackets which, um, which mount these panels, these larger type panels kind of properly to narrowboats well um, you can get the, the tilting brackets, they're very good but for, but for a panel like this um, and an installation like this, um, I, um, you know, I, I like to mount them flat. I do, and then there's no, there's no like, um, you don't have to think about where, way more, and um, what, what direction you'd be facing in that. Um, you just kind of forget about it. Um, and in the winter, it's often it's often hard to, to to know what's going on and where where the, what direction to, to tilt them. Um, so it's just you just forget about it. You do. Anyway, so um, this job, it's, it's, I've done it for a customer who's just bought the boat and they want to they wanna live aboard um, in London, like they want to work in London. So they're going to be like continuous cruisers in London. So, um, so yeah, so they don't want to be running the engine hard. Um, so, yeah, to do a job like this, normally I'd be I'd be removing um, mushroom vents. So I've, for this, I've, I've had to remove two mushroom vents. I'm d doing that. You you, man you you can get the panels nice and close together, and I kind of it looks a bit neater. It does like that, you know. Um, so um, yeah, so that th these 305 watt panels, they're they're they're, they're 40 volt. Very roughly, they're 40 volt. So they're wide in series they are, and I use six mil cable um, on the roof. I always try and anchor it both, you know, I fix it um, kind of both ends, just so you don't get an issue with um, with branches and that ripping ripping the cable off and, and damaging the panel or damaging anything. Um, and normally to get in through the roof, I'd be, I'd use an enclosure here, um, like a waterproof enclosure and like sicker flex them to the, to the roof and then um, and drill and tap it as well, and then sicker flex it, and and then you kind of it's easy way to get into the roof, into the electrical cupboard. But with this, it's it's a semi trailer, so so it was easier just to just to go through a hole which is already there. Um, and there's a cover here, cover going over here, so it's it's neater like this anyway. Um, but um, it's an efficient boat. This is it's twelve volt boat, so you have dual line fridge, um, LED lights, um, twelve volt TV, twelve volt aerial for the TV, and um, like car radio, twelve volt car radio, um, and then there's a small, like, really cheap inverter, just for charging a, a laptop from, and then it's got circuit lighter sockets for for mobile phones and that, um, and tablets or whatever. Um, so a lot of people they'll say it's ridiculous having such a big solar power system for such an efficient boat, but it's it's not about w what it does now in the summer. Um, it's about what what it does in in you know going towards the winter, and it'll extend the season that that the solar is useful for. Um, so with this system, um, I've fitted I fitted a smaller controller than normal I have. I fitted it. It's a hundred volt, thirty amp Victron controller, and something like this. It's it's perfect for this size. Well, for this type of boat where it's such an efficient twelve volt type boat, um, and it you won't see. You know, you, you'll never get the potential of the of the large panels. You'll never see the power potential of them. But um, but having such a large system, you know, you'll you'll still see you'll see good good power going into into winter um, and with this one it hasn't got the smart solar it hasn't got the bluetooth built into it but it's got the little dongle um, so uh, the beauty of these Victron controllers with the with the bluetooth with the dongle is the 
is a Victron app it is and it's the Victron Connect app so if you've got a smartphone or tablet you can you can download this app and it gives you a, there's a demo version of it so you can like mess around with it and, and see what it does but basically you, you can set you can change a lot of the well you can change most of the voltage settings you can you can change um, the different voltages to, to suit your batteries um, and then there's a there's history function where you you can see what what the unit's been doing over the last you know see what's been going on over the last like 30 days and that for a livable board boater who's 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 um, really reliant on solar that that's a really useful function that is and you'll see you know you'll see when it's when when the solar is starting to drop off and it gives you a good idea of when to, when you know when you got to start running the engine um, and if this is if the solar is keeping up with it with everything you can see how things change over the over maybe a dull day or 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 when it's brighter in the winter um yeah so that that's really really useful that is uh, also it lets you um it lets you do an equalization charge and for for open lead acid batteries that that can be really useful as well so you can you can adjust the the voltage to to equalize your batteries um and i mean um some of the settings you can't change you, you can't change the the tail current and that that's where it decides um when to go from absorption to to float the float voltage and it's set it's just set at two amps on these and you know you, you could argue what that setting should be but it's it's a bit of a shame that that it, you can't alter that um but two amps very roughly two amps is is about right for the average narrow boater you know you'd um that'd be about right for 400 amp hour battery bank i mean you can argue about what, what that what that tail current could be but um you know roughly that that is about right and so when you you can also set it up to do an automatic equalization charge but i'd, I'd always worry um i'd worry a bit that the batteries aren't fully charged when it does that equalization you know if it's only if it's only relying on the i'm not sure exactly how how, how it decides when to do it but if it's relying on that tail current being being two amps it's a bit it's a bit too high that is you know you'd want to really fully charge the batteries before you do an equalization um but so yeah so um i've used a 16 mil cable going in through the through the bulkhead battery batteries the other side of the bulkhead and you go straight onto the onto the ice onto the battery side of the isolator switch or straight to the batteries but it's just sometimes easier to go straight to the to the battery side of the isolator switch running through a fuse you know obviously a, a, re, a good quality fuse um so it complies with the boat safety um I, I always try and mount the controllers in the you know inside where it's nice and dry um okay so that's about it really and i've fitted a battery monitor that's another thing you know if if you're a liverboard if you're if you're a continuous cruiser away from shore power really you you've got to get some sort of monitor um i mean smart gauge is a fairly kind of basic monitor and a lot of people it's not it's not right you know it's not the best one to get Vic, Vic, the victron one's really good the bmv um 700 um, or that series, the BMV series, it's really good monitor. Um, and the only thing is, you, you, with a the, with a Victron, you need to know what's going on. You need to know what you're doing. So it's not it's not right for everyone. Um, and a smart gauge is just so simple. Um, so yeah. So if you've got any questions, or you you know you're thinking of getting a system like this fitted, you know, like a solar powered system. Um, yeah, happy to answer any questions and quote for a job or, you know, come and visit the boat and see what you need. Um, I mean, often, often I'd be fitting a, a bigger controller or what. Often I'd be fitting, um, they do 150, they do, 100 volt, 50 amp, or they do um, a 150, 45. And the be beauty about the bigger ones, the, 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 I say the 150, is you could add another panel to it in series. Um, but on, obviously on a boat like this, you're not going to think about adding another panel. It's kind of, there's not much more space to add another panel. So, um, yeah, so, um, but quality wise, there's no real difference. You know, these little controllers, even, even the 75 volt one, it, they're really well made, they are. Um, yeah, so, 
Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, any questions, please just get in touch. Um, and I do have other work, like I do um, a lot of heating work, diesel, diesel, diesel-fired heating, with Baston, Mikuni, Eberspacker. And then um, for liverboards, I kind of, often you'll want a washing machine fitted and and most of the engines kind of maybe 10, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, often they weren't, the alternators weren't capable of, of powering a, a small washing machine through through a big inverter. But, um, you know, I, it is possible to fit, you know, different alternators and bigger alternators, smaller pulleys to, to get the best out of your, your charging system. Anyway, so, um, yeah, click on my website, more details, and um, thanks for watching.